Grumpy Old Geeks, a weekly talk show hosted by Brian Schulmeister and Jason DeFilippo discussing the finer points of what went wrong on the internet and who's to blame. Welcome to Grumpy Old Geeks. I'm Jason DeFilippo. And I'm Brian Schulmeister. Happy after Halloween. Happy after Halloween. Did you have fun with the kiddo? Uh, I stayed home and passed out candy. I don't know if I'd mentioned this to you, but we moved on to a street in Toronto that is so into Halloween that they get permits from the city to shut the street down to car traffic. And uh, most of the city comes to our street. I handed out over 800 pieces of candy in less than two and a half hours, and we had to shut off all the lights and close the doors because we were out of candy. That sounds like hell. It was actually a lot of fun. It was it was really great. <laughs> I enjoyed it a lot. So it was a good time. And the kid ran around and got tons of candy and is thrilled. So it was fun. It was it was normal, you know? He, this is the first because he's five years old, right? So Oh, yeah. Uh, Pre-COVID, he wasn't old enough to really get what Halloween was at all. And then COVID hit and we couldn't do trick or treating and had to make shit up like hiding candy around the house. So this is, this was his first experience and he had a, he had a blast. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, Halloween here ends uh, on October 30th because we have like, you know, we have a really nice big display that we put up in the front of the house for all of October. And then October 30th, it all just goes back in the, in storage and we shut off all the lights, lock the gates <laughs> and call it a night at six o'clock and say, stay the hell away. <laughs> uh, mainly just cause we have dogs that will eat small children. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So I don't know if you noticed, Brian, it has been a shit tech news week. I, I didn't know if it was me burned out on tech news or me just not finding anything, but I guess it's the me not finding anything. Yeah, I went through everything this way. I went, uh, you know, just scrolling headlines every day. Just nothing. I mean, if it wasn't meta, it was nothing. Yeah. And so, yes, I I, I, I have proof. So behold, the, the the this made mainstream news. This is how shitty of a uh, tech news week it was. A Reddit user found a black hole on Google Maps and users couldn't figure out what it was. Huh. This was on like, you know, KTLA here in Los Angeles. And I'm like, and it turns out, you know, a dot in the middle of the ocean. Hmm. You'd think it was an island. Well, it fucking was. Also, That's you're <laughs> looking at a map that labels things. So I don't know. It tells it just tells you weeks. what it is on the map. Okay. So there you go. There you go. Yes. All right. Yes, it's slow Vostok Newsweek. Island. Okay. So there it is. You know, slow news weeks used to be like then you would get the heartwarming stories. Now you just get the idiots. That's what you get on slow news weeks. It's what you get on fast news weeks too, I'm no, afraid. True. So let's yeah. get into the news. All right. In the news. Yeah, you couldn't throw a, you know, just throw a rock without hitting meta this week. And because we we missed it from our show last week, it didn't happen yet. And uh, now that it has happened, yes, Facebook is going to be called meta. Everybody knows. I have been talking to uh, civilians, Brian. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know many of them, but I I know quite a few civilians who aren't, you know, tech nerds like us. Yeah. And uh, the buzz on the street is, what are they? They think we're stupid? They suck. This is the, the dumbest thing ever. And what the fuck is it? Some universe thing? What the f- we Nobody can understand what it is, for starters. The normies have no clue. Yeah. And then they're like, you, you're trying to get out of all the shit that's been on the news, so you just change the name? You know, people are wise to their shenanigans. Just even normal folks. Um, we still use Facebook, yes, by the way. But yes, no, um, I agree. That has been the re- the reaction for most of my friends that aren't uh, tech heavy. They're more music industry. Uh, but I also have a lot of friends that are financially savvy, and uh, they're like, "This is genius. This is rebranding Google a la Alphabet. Uh, you have a, a top level company. I mean, Meta is just as dumb as Alphabet." And uh, then you have you you build your company underneath that. You have your different divisions. Might help out with some of the regulatory issues if they do some separation. Worked for Google. Uh, sorry, worked for Alphabet. Uh, <laughs> and uh, stock price going up. So who's who's the dumb one? Yeah, I don't know. I know. But I mean, it is okay. Who is the dumb one? Their whole their whole presentation on what Meta will be is fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. nobody wants that it is so bad nobody mm-hmm. wants it it's 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 shown so poorly and so he they think they're apple and steve jobs and they're just not 
Like, the presentations are dumb and horrific and cringeworthy, and the idea is dumb and horrific and cringeworthy. It's second life on steroids. whoop de doo Yeah, they're trying to reinvent late Outside 90s of the fact, cyber None of it arcades, exists. You know? None of it exists. Yeah. And won't for a very long time. It won't exist because nobody fucking wants it. No, well, there's that. We too. have a metaverse right now with all of the gadgets and cameras and displays that we have. We can do just about anything that you can with, with you know, just as far as AR goes. Look at Snap. You can do AR with that. Look at Pokemon Go. You know, you've got your AR things, and those are fine use cases. You don't need to strap something to your fucking head and go into, a, you know, basically another Zoom meeting, but you got like five pounds of gear on your head. Yeah. And that shit still sucks. People get sick. Their necks hurt. There is just no good use for the technology that he's trying to bring to Meta. It's I can't like, remember. No, we have technology. Fuck. I, can't, I can't remember who I was listening to. I have a feeling it was Scott Galloway again uh, on on Pivot or something like that, who said uh, something really interesting. He said, everybody's focusing on the wrong sense. It shouldn't yep, be yep. vision. It should be hearing. And the person that's going to get us into the metaverse the fastest and the easiest is Apple and the AirPods. Because yep, that was on that was a okay, pivot that this was morning. Pivot. And I thought that was great. I'm, that totally mm -hmm. makes sense to me. That is a metaverse that I wouldn't mind having. I don't want to wear goggles or a camera or anything like that. That's ridiculous. I don't want a yeah. fucking avatar of me wandering around. I don't even like me wandering around. Why would I want an avatar <laughs> no, of me wandering around? Exactly. No, Brian, but it's Ready Player One, man. It's Ready Player One. Yeah, that Except was a dystopia. Not, we don't have the technology. All these yeah, things that they're trying to build were dystopias, you fucking morons. Yeah, the reason that they invented the metaverse was to get rid of the because the, the real world was so miserable. I mean, I know you're trying to jump the gun. <laughs> Why do all our billionaires want off the planet or out of the real world so badly? Because there's no more money to take. They're 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 running out of people to mind. So mm. anyways, dumb, dumb, dumb. Yeah. So uh, Facebook is also working on a new smartwatch, allegedly with two cameras. Great idea. Great idea. <laughs> but how many notches? How are those Ray-Bans working out, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> or, Anybody buy buy those Ray Bans yet? Or, or their uh, their Amazon Echo competitor too. Uh, I can't even remember what it was called because nobody Portal. has one. Portal. Yeah, yeah. You guys, yeah. you guys are hitting it out of the park with hardware. Keep at it. No, they are they are they are going to fail so miserably. And that's what I said last time. Like if they're going to keep pumping this money into Meta, everybody get a job, take the money, and run. You yeah. know, because they're never they're never going to to crack that nut. And it could very well be the undoing of them, but. It won't be. Yeah, I, I guess uh, Amazon did recover from the Fire Phone. Yeah. So yeah, you, know, you can't have a gazillion dollar flop. <laughs> yeah, they'll be fine. They're too they're too big to fail right now, unfortunately. Yeah, and Apple is working on a headset. It is uh, rumored a mm -hmm. very expensive headset. They're saying it should be coming out maybe in twenty twenty two, maybe, but probably twenty twenty three, and uh, it'll be mixed reality. So I'm um, not going to say any more about it because there's it's all speculation. Too early to tell. It's all speculation. Yeah. Yeah, but I got to say, Wendy's wins the uh, the internet for the day with their their Twitter thread. The PR <laughs> company that runs their Twitter is is fucking genius, man. I, I started following them about two or three years ago, and they're just great. Yeah, because it all started out with changing name to Meet, and Slim Jim's like, this is awkward. We're going with Meta, <laughs> and then welcome to the Metaverse, and there are just so many companies that went back and forth with them. Yeah. That it was just, it, I mean, it, it really made the day. I mean, I, I, I busted out Photoshop and made a Goatsy Meta logo, which was pretty fun, but I haven't used Photoshop in a while. Yeah. And, but here's the problem. Most people didn't get it because nobody knows what Goatsy is anymore. Well, Goatsy, let's be honest, Jason, was not exactly a mass media even back in the day. Oh, it kind of was. It kind of was. Mm. Remember the software package I made called uh, Goatsy Peg? It was kind of like to to uh, thwart Etherpeg, which is where you could scan the Ethernet, uh, or not, it was supposed to be Ethernet, but you scan the Wi-Fi mm -hmm. for any images coming through, and you could see every image that was coming across the network. Yeah. Uh, so I just had a little one pixel, one pixel thing that just kept reloading Goatsy every time. <laughs> so anybody that was running uh, Etherpeg would just get a screen full of Goatsy. It was fun. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah. And I saw this one over on TMZ of all places. Uh, there's a, a uh, com computer company that uh, changed their name to Meta a while ago, and uh, they trademarked it. Well, they have a trademark application in, right? And so they're willing to give it back to Zuck for twenty million. I'm like, you guys, are, that's kind of cheap. That's yeah, I know. I would cheap. ask for more. Yeah. Uh, so a rare thing to find that Facebook had some good 
something good came out of them. Uh, They took down a government-run troll farm in Nicaragua, apparently. Multiple government agencies helped run a network of fake accounts and media pages that spanned across Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube. So they shared this uh, on their monthly report on coordinated inauthentic behavior on the platform. So hundreds of fake accounts, blah, blah, blah. And they said the weird thing about this is that it's so obvious and they were able to trace it to so many government institutions. Now, to be fair, I'm glad that they stopped this. (laughs) And, you know, Nicaragua, not exactly the best government, not exactly doing good things. But you want to talk about dystopia, a private company called Facebook has taken down government institutions in in a, in a sovereign country. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. You know, the, Facebook has so much money, they could actually have just bought Nicaragua. Yeah. Just probably. They, you know. Yep. Renamed it Meta. Meta Land. That's where everybody's Meta. gonna move. I so, just I just love that they have a report on coordinated into, inauthentic behavior. I'm like, isn't that Instagram? Pretty much. So they were able to do that, yet they couldn't stop themselves from verifying a Bitcoin scammer pretending to be Elon Musk. Um, Smooth, yeah. Guys. One hand giveth, the other hand taketh away. So, <laughs> and uh, now, I, how this page got verified is beyond me. I mean, we can't get verified for God's sake. Uh, they they verified a Facebook fan page for Elon Musk as Musk's own official account. Uh, it says in the about section, this is a fan page uploading tweets, etc., from him, and the URL ends in something that is Elon Musk offici which, you know, doesn't sound very official to me. In the page transparency Mm -hmm. section, it says the people who manage the page are based in Egypt, not where Elon Musk happens to live. Facebook verification (laughs) theoretically requires account owners to submit proof of identity, such as driver's license or passport. How did this happen? I guess they were concentrating on Nicaragua. That must be the problem. Yeah, it must have been. Somebody just hit that verify button. Uh, I saw this came across uh, the, the wire, which was interesting. Uh, snap investigation alert. Mm-hmm. Kessler, Topaz, Metzler, and Check LLP is investigating securities fraud claims on behalf of Snap Inc. investors. Okay. So I'm I'm curious uh, what they're what they're doing since I am now a Snap am investor, a shareholder of Snap. Yes, I am a Snap investor. You have skin in I the snap. I want to know how my hundred dollars is being used. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Still still under when I bought it by like a buck. So All right. hoping it's going to snap back one of these days. <laughs> I think I, they're not going anywhere. They'll be around. They'll just never. They'll be like Twitter, you know, the, the, uh, the you know, ugly step cousin. Always there. And it's crazy. A lot of people still use them. And it, they it's not it's not as addictive as TikTok. Mm-hmm. It's not as harmful as Twitter. Uh, it's not as just overused as Instagram. It's still there and people use it, but they don't even talk about it that much, but they're on it every day. Yeah. It's just kind of a thing, it's you know, just a thing. Yep. it's in their list. So I don't know, maybe they're going to come out of this. Well, they, they're actually an AR company. They've had glasses and things that are in the work. So technically they're ahead of Facebook. So yeah. maybe that's why Zuck called it meta. So he could, you know, cause he can only come up with new ideas that snap had first anymore. So he saw snaps glasses and said, Hey, we got to get in on that. Yep. Let's do it. Let's do it. No. Oh. And after all the big news about Uber and Hertz, uh, last week and you know, the trillion dollar run, woo, mm-hmm. yay, whatever. I'm pissed off. I sold all my Tesla stock cause I'm an idiot. Um, but honestly, who could have seen that one coming? <laughs> no, me. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say you, bro. I knew you were going to say that. Uh, So uh, starting yesterday, Mm -hmm. Uber drivers can rent 2021 Tesla Model 3 cars through Hertz's rental program in L.A., San Francisco, San Diego, and Washington, D.C. It will be nationwide in the the following weeks. Please don't Uh, be using the the beta software, please. (laughs) No shit. (laughs) No shit. It's going to run you 334 bucks a week, excluding taxes and fees. Wow. Uh, They say they'll get it down to 299 or lower over time. Um, And you have to have at least a 4.7 star rating and a minimum of 150 trips. That is not cheap. No, that's like half a day or a day's work to pay for just the car. Yeah. So at least. Doesn't make any sense. Depending on surge pricing. Yes. Yes, of course. (laughs) And uh, you and I might be rolling in the crypto soon, Jason. 
TechCrunch has reported that Patreon executives Jack Conte and Julian Gutman said at the information's latest summit that the company was evaluating the use of crypto, including a previously hinted that possibility of allowing creator coins that fans can buy to show support. Yes, you too can own a grumpy old geek's creator coin in the very near future, which will be worth absolutely nothing. Yeah. <laughs> We, we prefer you just give us the money and we don't give you anything in return. That's so, Yeah, that's, that's how we like it. Uh, on the plus yeah. side, though, because we had talked about uh, putting out some grumpy old geeks NFTs and like usual, we just never do it. They might package <laughs> yeah. that as well. So we could do it easily through their service and uh, in the future. Who knows? Uh, basically, Patreon is desperately trying to find new things to do. If they'll let us sell these, you know, yeah. garbage episodes as NFTs, I'll sell them as, as long as we got them. Yeah, you can own the original <laughs> Pure copy. Yes, you can get the 490 uh, Dave Bittner Fuckfest for only 5,000 whatever ETH. Well, and we're good to go. There's a hell of a show title. Uh, and speaking of crypto, we got this one from Sherman. Hey, geeks, just wanted to drop this in here as one to add to the crypto is a fucking scam files. And this is a story about Squid Game crypto plunges to zero after scammers steal millions of dollars from investors. Are they really investors? I would not. Call Honestly, out. I think I call we call them, them rubes. marks. Rubes or yeah, marks. Yeah, rubes and marks. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they absconded with uh, $2.1 million, which isn't a whole lot. So who made so it? Made, who made the Squid? Uh, I, I guess, okay, so it's not related to Netflix or the people that made Squid Game no. or something like that. Because I can see that, you know, back when we were kids and like Star Wars came out and then McDonald's would sell those really crappy glasses that you could get, uh, and, yeah. you know, that would have like Princess Leia on one and Han Solo on the other. I can see yep. this being the new thing that, that, that people do. Like the Matrix come, you know, the new Matrix is coming out and they should be marketing a Matrix coin along with it. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Another great idea mm. for free for anybody that wants to use it. But yeah, I think maybe, I mean, it was only 2.1 million. So maybe they tried to get out, like, you know, get a decent chunk of change, but not so much that, you know, the black, uh, yeah, the black ops, the black squads yeah. would come find them, yeah. <laughs> whatever rock they're hiding under. The funny thing is everybody said it was a scam. Don't invest. So, uh, you get what you, yep. you get what you pay for on that yep, one. Yep. And I saw this this morning. I thought it was really interesting. Uh, Yahoo is now out of China. This is, th th these are coming hard and fast with everybody pulling out of China. Well, there's, there's, uh, there's no plus side for being there. And uh, basically China steals your tech and steals your institutional knowledge if you go there. And then they prop up a local, uh, local guy to basically rebuild what you built. And then they push that one instead of you. And all of a sudden China has its own thing. Uh, that was exactly like your thing that you came there to hope to sell to them. So that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I'm not surprised at all that we're we're starting to move and, um, you know, U.S. and international companies are getting out because they've seen this pattern over and over again. And it's not working out well for anybody except China. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's been a thing with physical goods for years. So why not software as well? Yep. So I because Fortnite pulled out as well this week. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was really interesting, especially since part of them are China owned. Yeah. So. I mean, you want to talk about the splinter web. I mean, this is it happening right in front of our eyes. Like China is, yeah. has its own versions of everything and they're not available outside of China and our stuff isn't, isn't there anymore. So they've got their own whole thing now. Yep. And Russia's trying to follow suit. Mm -hmm. So yay, internet. <laughs> Goodbye, internet. <laughs> That's about it. And uh, this is just one of the, just because you can do a thing, why should you? Mm -hmm. Uh I saw this over at Business Insider. It's about a company called Hereafter.ai. We've covered some of these uh, uh, chat bots that are recreated from conversations with dead people. Yeah. And uh, these guys have just, they've gone whole hog and started a company around it. And I don't, I, no, 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 no. Uh -uh. Or to quote Ted Lasso, no. <laughs> Because the, the thing about it that finally I, I was thinking of this morning when I was just, you know, mulling this over, I'm like, you know, in a, like, you know, 15, 20 years, if they still have these things, it would be interesting to go back and see how unwoke the dead people are, <laughs> how, how shitty and racist people used to be back then, because that's the way people were back then. Can you imagine going back to like, you know, you know, uh, like the 1800s and getting chat bots from people back then. Oh my God, they'd be canceled so my, fast. My great, great, great grandfather's <laughs> chat bot. You done married a China woman? Exactly. Is that one of them goddamn Orientals? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Nobody needs that. Nobody needs afterlife Twitter. 
No, they don't. Some things should just fucking die. Look, we tell you not even to like have current life Twitter. You should be using tweet delete. <laughs> you definitely yeah. don't need one after you're dead. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. And it reminded me, I, I long ago, I think this, I started this in 2004. Uh, it was that site Death Vault that oh, I was yeah. trying to I build? Yeah, I remember that. Yep. Yeah, I threw the logo in in the the show notes here, so you can if you want to do a social with it. Um, I think I used Fi- it was an early version of Fiverr to get that <laughs> logo done. And uh, yeah, that was just a. I'm not really good with upbeat happy names. No, <laughs> everybody's like everybody was like that's a great idea, but man, the name really. <laughs> Still is like, a good idea. I can't believe somebody doesn't hasn't like taken that and built something pretty solid with it yet. Yeah, yeah. I just got scared with all the crypto that I needed to know to do it because the whole premise of it was that's where you keep all of your sensitive documents that if you don't, you know, if your heartbeat doesn't ping the service in X amount of time, that everything gets released to your family, your lawyers and yep. everything like that. Mm-hmm. And uh and I even, it's, this is even before I even knew about these things, I was coming up with, okay, I've got multiple levels of passwords. So if I'm getting, you know, held at gunpoint somewhere, I can give somebody, you know, a, a password that would say, okay, here are the documents and give them a fake set of documents and then immediately call the police and you send them my IP address and geolocation <laughs> so somebody could come fucking rescue me. Yeah. And I mean, uh, then it, it turns out that that's a spy thing that they've been doing forever. I guess so, most of this oops. stuff is is kind of baked into like your one passwords or your password managers. If you use that, you can put your important documents in. You can give somebody your your master password or set something. I don't know, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's a thing. I think I was I was more building it just for something that's like, okay, if I get in trouble, uh, you know, the documents will be released type of thing. <laughs> no, <laughs> as per usual for Jason, it's it's, it's um, yeah, somewhat would, shady purposes. I was making it like I was in a movie, you know? I wanted to have some fun with it. It was a coding project. It's, back then, we used to have coding projects that we did for fun, yes, remember? I that do was a remember. fun one. Yeah. And when I was going through my I was going through my archives trying to find the damn thing, and uh, I was looking at all these old websites, like source code and things that I had, and I was just looking at some old blog posts that I wrote back in the early 2000s, which is never a good idea. Mm-hmm. And uh, I found a, a, a post where... I was uh, bemoaning the death of Deadwood when they canceled it. <laughs> and uh, the word Deadwood linked to fuckhbo.com, which I, I'm i almost positive was mine. I'm I think sure I got it was. that one. I'm sure it was. But the, the crazy thing about it now is it's available. <laughs> so if anybody would like to go get fuckhbo.com, it's it's currently available. You know, so who should first get come, that. first serve for that one. You should sell. You should you should uh, write John Oliver's people. I'm sure they can do something funny with that. Uh, no, he's I'm going to skip that one. He's always crapping <laughs> on his masters. Yeah, but if it's fuckatnt.com, yeah, I can see true. that. That's but true. Uh, the funny thing is, though, it's like I you know back in the day, these companies would get these antagonistic domains and hold on to them and just register them for 30 years, so nobody could ever get them. Apparently, HBO is so untouchable now that everybody loves them, and they think, uh, well, our shit don't stink. Well, you and I have talked about this. Domain names don't really matter so much anymore. The algorithms don't care that much about your dot-coms. Yeah, we're old. Yep. Media Candy. So the new Star Trek show has come out, Star Trek Prodigy, and I watched the, the first episode. They're doing the once a week drops over at Paramount Plus. Um, I watched this because uh, I knew you wouldn't because it's being marketed towards kids. I'm not sure whose kids, because um, <laughs> the first episode was pretty dark. <laughs> I was like, there's no way I'm going to let my kid watch this. I watched it this morning. Oh, good. What'd you think? Well, the the thing is, the animation style reminded me so much of the Star Wars animated series. I didn't know which universe I was in. (laughs) I really didn't. Yeah. Until literally the last five seconds of the show. When Janeway shows uh, up. When you get the big reveal. (laughs) Yeah, the big Janeway reveal. Like, that's the only Star Trek-y thing about it. Yeah. And, uh... You know, it's it. Yeah, I I don't get the demo on this one at all. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, and it was so formulaic. It was just like, oh my god, this is the part where you're supposed to tear up. This is the part where you're supposed to go, yay! This is the part where you go, <gasps> you know. It was just so beat by beat by beat boring. I'm hoping it'll get better now that they're on the ship, and we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, it was like 
you know, the, the way that they were promoting it, it was like, all oh, right, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten year olds can get into Star Trek. It'll be a feel good show. And I was like, oh, Hell no. whoa, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> what is happening yeah. here? <laughs> no, it's a little intense for kids. Yeah. I mean, it's it's more it's more intense than regular Star Trek episodes are. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, but uh, it, the thing is, it's uh, definitely not for me. I will not be continuing on with that that journey. I'm going to give it a go. Uh, it worked for me with la- with Lower Decks, so we'll see. Okay, let me know how that goes. I so. will. Um, speak- it is pretty, though. I give it, it that. It's pretty. Yeah, yeah. We'll see what happens. Um, anyways, mm-hmm. uh, speaking of giving things another go, I watched another episode of, uh, oh, God, what's the show called? It's the new Jon Stewart show. The uh, problem with? The problem with. Um, and I've got a problem with. Uh, it, <laughs> it's just too depressing. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, John Oliver is depressing, but it's depressing funny. John Stewart, not so funny, just depressing. Uh, Can't do it. Okay, yeah, I gave up on it after the first episode. Uh, I mean, I, I know I said I was going to go back and try it. I did. I lied. I did, so you don't have to. <laughs> I lied. I did, yeah. so you don't have to. Uh, the jokes, the jokes just aren't there. The 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 silly comic faces that John Stewart pulled back you know, 20 years ago when he had the the Comedy Central show have not aged well and are not funny. Uh, comedy has moved on and the, the, the comedy to depression ratio is way too skewed to depression. Like it's okay. dark. Too bad. Yep. And then I cleansed it with some more Ted Lasso. I'm still working my way through the season. It is phenomenal. I love it. It's so good. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Get to the end. Skip to the end. Come on. No, no skipping. No skipping. I linger. I savor Ted Lasso's. Ups and doodads. So, Brian, the Oculus Quest that I have here, mm-hmm. um, who I have had a love, hate, hate, hate. Mostly hate. Relationship yes. with. <laughs> yes. Mostly love to hate. Yeah, I have one love for like 20 hates, uh, especially because of the problem with the Facebook login shit that I had to deal with and couldn't use it for like months. Yep. Um, uh, they're going to finally get rid of the uh, account login requirement. Okay. And apparently when that whole thing happened and the big backlash with them requiring the Facebook account for the Oculus, mm-hmm. that's when Mark came up with a grand idea to call it meta ah. and start that whole thing. That was the the impetus for that whole project. But um, that's fine. They're also getting rid of the name Oculus, okay. which will be interesting. Metaculous. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I still like metastasize, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so they're going to finally get rid of that. Um, I still haven't plugged mine back in yet to finish those Star Wars games, so maybe eventually. Here, maybe str- not. strap Who this knows? onto your head. It'll mist- metastasize. Yeah, that's going to go great. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, and over at uh, Apple Arcade, mm-hmm. which I get with my, um, I don't know, Apple plus one whatever thing you, I got with yep. all of the goodies, mm-hmm. um, they released Tiny Wings Plus. Tiny Wings was one of the best, you know, single click games ever made. Mm-hmm. And I was excited when I saw it. I'm like, woohoo! Because, you know, they redid uh, was it Alto's Odyssey and put in some extra levels, which was great. I like that. Tiny Wings, they did not. For the main the main game, there's still only 30 levels. And I beat those 30 levels seven or eight years ago. So I was I was bummed. Yeah. There's another secondary game where you're racing these little uh computer generated birds, which is definitely not nearly as fun and sucks. And they added new levels to that, okay. which made me really bummed, but i um, still, I'm still got my fingers crossed, hoping one day that they're going to go get flight control back because flight control was one of the single best games ever on iOS. And I miss it. Right. Cool. So uh, we've been talking a little bit about global supply shortages and shipping and all that sort of stuff, particularly uh, my studio here, because I can't even get a damn couch or anything. Uh, But I saw this story and I just thought this is hilarious. Um, Apple has not had too many problems because they've got all the monies and they've been able to purchase a bunch of stuff. However, there is something that you can order that uh, will take an awful long time for it to get to you. It is backordered a lot. It is the $19 polishing cloth. Okay. <laughs> yes, if you order the microfiber cloth from the company store as of uh, when this article was written, you'll have to wait 10 to 12 weeks to get your Apple branded wow. polishing experience. You could buy a new MacBook <laughs> nice. Pro and wait in another two months after you get your MacBook Pro to officially wipe smudges off the screen. <laughs> nice. That is great. Nice. 
I actually have something back ordered right now through uh, Apple because I, I I saw this and I wanted it right away. It's called the Belkin Boost Charge Pro three in one wireless charger with MagSafe Black. Ah. Um, I don't know if you've seen these things. They're really cool. They're not cheap. They're 140 bucks, but uh, it's basically a little T bar on the base. You put your AirPods. One side of the arm, you put your your Apple Watch, and on the other side, you put your phone. Yeah, I've got so, a thirty dollars one for my bed stand. Remember? Yeah, and it works great. Yeah, I'm sure it does. I'm <laughs> sure it does. But I like this one. I just like this one here. I'll throw this in the show notes so you can check it out. But uh, this thing has been um, still back ordered, and it's not coming anytime soon, as far as I can tell. Uh, November third to the seventeenth. So <laughs> kind of kind of bummed about that one. Yeah, but when it gets here. I will be charging like a pro. All right. And I've got a, so I went down a little bit of a music news rabbit hole here because I saw this story first. Uh, Fender is buying studio gear company Presonus, which uh, we no. use some of their stuff. So that's interesting. It will still need regulatory approval because, you know, we can, <laughs> we can do regulatory approvals on guitar manufacturers, but we can't fucking do it on Meta. Apparently, (laughs) Uh, they did not disclose financial terms of the deal, but uh, it makes sense because they envision, you know, obviously people are recording at home a lot more now. They're not going to studios and things like that. So making a deal with a company that basically builds really good small studio gear makes a lot of sense. So Mm -hmm. they're part of the Fender family now. So hopefully they don't screw it all up. The the professional Presona stuff Mm -hmm. I love. I still have a Studio 192, which is a rack mounted interface. Mm -hmm. Works like a charm still. Yeah. I mean, had that thing for like six, seven years now. It is just, it is uh, fantastic, yeah. bulletproof, totally solid. Their consumer grade stuff, not so much a fan. Yeah. Not so much a fan. Remember that one we bought, that little tiny uh, two XLR input interface? Yep. No boy. That thing no. was garbage. Yeah. Yeah, that thing was total garbage. It was a hundred bucks. Yeah. You know, the the studio one I got was like 800 bucks, but you get what you pay for. Yep. So. Yeah, so pretty good for PreSonus. Hopefully they made a chunk of change. Hopefully. Found some other things. There's Switzerland-based Mictic, which has created a pair of wearables that turn thin air into your concert hall. So you basically strap these things onto your wrist, and you can move your hands around like you just don't care, and it uh, triggers samples. Okay. I watched the video, and uh, they obviously used the same company that Meta did for their videos because it is just embarrassing (laughs) and looks silly. (laughs) And ridiculous, uh, but they have music megastar Moby as part one of, one of their initial uh, investors. So I don't see this being anything for anyone ever. The only thing that I could even imagine it being good for is maybe for live performance, particularly like industrial sort of stuff. Like if you were, you know, skinny puppy and you're thrashing around on stage and every time you moved your hand, you wanted to trigger a sample or something like that. I could see that, but I can't mm-hmm. imagine anybody buying this to play around with at home. It's just weird because the image on the top looks like she's playing air guitar. So yeah, it's just they're they're just the as far as I can tell they're just wrist straps and it's based on your movement. So oh, and you can trigger okay, different so. sets of samples from it. That's what uh, I can. So take no out noodling, of it. no noodling. Too bad. And then I saw this one and I just love the writing on it. Uh, the title: I wish anyone other than Kanye had made the stem player. Kanye found his way back into our <laughs> show. It is the Donda stem player. It's a fascinating and unique device. Not really. I read through this a little bit. It's a tiny puck-shaped computer, which basically, if you don't know what stems are, you're not in the music business, stems are basically the mixed-down elements of a song. You know, a a verily involved song will probably have, you know, maybe maybe 30, 40, 50, 60 stems. You know, one's the guitar tracks, Mm -hmm. one's drums, all that sort of stuff. Uh, Apparently, Kanye's music is not all that involved because there are four stems in this player. (laughs) And what it's 50 bucks a stem. What it lets you, yes, it's an expensive toy. Uh, What it lets you do, obviously, is you can put different effects on each track and you can, um, you know, do different volumes and all that sort of stuff. And as the review says, it looks kind of like a sex toy, though, and it's covered in what I assume are surplus fleshlights. It doesn't feel unpleasant, but it is slightly unnerving. So. And this thing is very, very expensive. Uh, they also have a lot of promises, of course, much like Kanye, that they don't keep. Um, they say some, you know, you'll be able to download other songs, and it will it will take the songs apart for you and create stems. Which, by the way, even with pro grade software on a high powered PC, <laughs> is almost next to impossible. 
to do. Yeah, I was going to say that doesn't work. <laughs> and as the reviewer points out, it does not work. Um, mm. And that there, there is no, no, uh, nothing. There is nothing in terms of a manual. There's a fact that tells you you can do a bunch of things, but uh, even the reviewer was, I have no idea what the hell that means or how to even do it. And nobody can tell you how, and it costs like 200 bucks. It's crazy. So <laughs> do not buy. Okay. I wasn't planning on it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's funny too, speaking of manuals. Mm -hmm. So when I get my, when I got my 14 inch MacBook, there's a little thing on top that used to contain a manual, but now it's like mostly cardboard <laughs> just so it fits where manuals where the manual used normally to be. go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now there's like a one sheet that says, go online, figure it out yourself, dumbass. And, uh, of course you still get stickers with Apple computers. They should probably stop doing that because when those stickers mattered was when Apple was a teeny little company. Now, if you put an Apple sticker on anything, you look like a twat. Or so, somebody will steal it. Yeah. And, uh, but here's the big change. I mean, they used to be rainbows back in the day, mm -hmm. and then they went to the white ones and then some silver ones. Now they're black. Ooh. Ooh. That's it. That's okay. all I got. No manual and a couple of black stickers. Thanks, Steve Jobs. Moron of the week. Barrett sent this one in, and I love it. The cringe level might qualify as a crime against humanity. This is uh, a, a leaked internal Facebook staff video talking about their benefits and how they need to claim it because open enrollment is happening. Did you watch this video, Brian? Uh, I, I watched about 30 seconds, and I'd had enough of Facebook's videos. Okay. It's, uh, <laughs> this one actually beats the meta one okay. for, for cringeworthy. It is bad, 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 bad. <laughs> I'm like, these guys have they, oh, way too much money, yep. no sense, and even less talent is all I got to say. It's like, you got to find some singers at, at Facebook if you want to do it. I know they're trying to be kitschy and uh, whatever, but uh, yeah, hire some professionals, not the interns. If you're going to do a music video about your benefits, please. Yeah, you've got the money. Security? Ha! Dave Bittner is joining us again from the great state of, what was it, Maryland, Dave? You're still in Maryland, yes, right? Yes, yes, it is, it is Maryland, and it is great. Thank you very much. Dave is the host of the CyberWire podcast, co-host of the social engineering podcast, Hacking Humans with Joe Kerrigan, co-host of Caveat with Ben Yellen, where they discuss law and policy, as well as surveillance and privacy. And finally, he's the co-host of Recorded Future, where he takes you inside the world of cyber threat intelligence. And his new show... Talking about Maryland. I was going to say, we, I was going to say, Maryland. the new podcast, what went wrong with the Orioles this season? <laughs> yeah, America. something like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> our, in our 10th our tenth year of that show. Yeah, it's, it's, At it's least. A, <laughs> you can just do your seasonal show, Merry Christmas, Maryland. That's right. You know, I remember one of the first baseball games I ever went to. My father took me to the old Memorial Stadium and... Uh, and uh, we got great tickets and we're sitting real close. And I remember my father telling me that there was this new player this year who they were really excited about. His name was Cal Ripken Jr. And mm -hmm. we were hoping that maybe he would go places. And I'm not sure how it worked out for him, but uh, I, I do remember that he hit a home run that night. So it was very exciting. That's pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. I think the most famous baseball player I ever saw play was Willie Stargell. Hmm. It's a good and one. hence the cricket. So not that famous for you guys if you're not in Pittsburgh. <laughs> I know the name. I know he was a. I know he was a Pittsburgh Pirate. That's that I know. Yes. Yep. Big old black dude. He had a really crazy wind up, and man, he could hit that ball. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Pete Rose every morning for about a week when I was uh, at a conference in Vegas, and I would walk by the sports Vegas. Go figure. And, <laughs> and he was and he was holding court in there sign yeah right exactly he was holding court in there signing autographs and uh doing you know i guess what what Pete Rose does these days those were those were not autographs those were IOUs <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it was funny the first day you walk by you sort of stop and look and you go oh that's Pete Rose after a whole week it's like oh i guess Pete doesn't have a whole lot on his schedule <laughs> uh, so yeah, he hadn't started up his podcast yet. Uh, we got some feedback from some listeners here. And this one, first one comes from listener Gene. You're negative about everything, everything. Then Apple puts out a $2,000 box of glue, calls it a laptop, and you write epic poems about it. What the fuck? Have some dignity and stop being such a tool. 
And by the way, I'm writing this to you on a MacBook Air. <laughs> First of all, what you mean we, Kimosabi? Uh, I don't know. You were kind of excited too. <laughs> don't don't throw no, me I'm under the bus. I'm not, yes, but no, he no, doesn't no, have I'm the, not, he doesn't I'm have not the yin to that yang. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yes. I, well, I will guilty as charged when it comes to uh, getting excited about new Apple hardware, but I think we're justified in that these new processors are legitimately a breakthrough. And also, to be fair, yes, Jason and I are very negative about things, but but Jason also gets ex excited about anything he buys. Yes. <laughs> At least until it shows up, and then he hates right, it. Exactly. There's, yeah, he's the king of the honeymoon period. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, then, and then he's the prince of buyer's remorse. <laughs> well, no, then I'm the prince of giving well, shit away. I've, got, I've got shipping labels That's for true. everybody. That's true. Yeah. yeah how's we that are mic the, you're we, talking to me on there, I, Dave? I was going to say, we are, we are the beneficiaries <laughs> of Jason's buyer's remorse <laughs> because- he is a generous of, of regifting the things that he purchases, so I, I, exactly I cannot so. fault you there. <laughs> you say, watch it there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now I'm just looking around the room and seeing how many things here were sent to me by Jason. So, yep, 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 yep. There was a period of time where I always knew anything came from Jason because it always had um. What was that artist that always did the uh, Andre the Giant stuff on it? Shepherd Fairy. It always had a Shepherd, Shepherd Fairy, Fairy sticker stickers. on it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I bought I bought a couple pieces and, and basically when you buy uh, Shepherd Fairy posters and artwork, they send you a giant bag of stickers. So yeah, so yeah. anything from Jason had a Shepherd Fairy sticker on it, and I would just look around the room. Oh, yep, that's from Jason. All so the it echoes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no. So I got to say, I still love it. It's working great for me. Oh, yeah. I wanted to check in on, on you, Jason. Last time when we spoke last week, you had you were about to receive it. So you're a week in now. Oh, still that's feeling right. good about it? Oh, my God. It is the best laptop. I'm uh, sorry, Gene. I'm going to, I got to gush. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is so damn good. I got the 14 inch. Uh, yep. Everybody says it's heavy, but it's not heavy because I'm coming from a 16 inch, the, ah. the last 16 inch, which was just a brick. This mm -hmm. thing is light. It's nimble. It's comfortable. It doesn't basically irradiate my balls when I put it on my lap. There's no mm -hmm. fan noise. Uh, it's fast. Uh, it's got ports. I actually <laughs> use the SD card port. It works. It's amazing. Wow. Uh, all in all, I'm, I'm keeping my air just because, you know, two is one and one is none just in case. Um, right. and, uh, but this is my main now. I, I basically open up my air every now and again, just to make sure it's updated and all the patches are on, but, um, I'm running Monterey on everything and, uh, amazingly everything works. It, I can't believe it. So mm -hmm. knock on wood. Um, I only had one problem with Ophonic and I had to do a clean my Mac, uh, X, uh, uninstall and reinstall and then it worked again. But so far everything else works. And it works well. Yeah. You know, well, everything that runs in Rosetta is comparable to what, what it was running on the 16-inch Intel. So I haven't right. lost any speed. But on other things, I've gained speed. Like, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, handbrake. Holy shitballs. Yeah. <laughs> My yeah. God. Yeah. 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 So uh, <laughs> I did see something for those of us that aren't upgrading, uh, much like myself. If, if we want to feel cool, on, on, you know, without outlaying the cash, apparently there's now an app called the uh, Notch Pro which adds a black <laughs> notch below the top center of a user's screen to emulate the new MacBook mm -hmm. Pro's most controversial design decisions. In fact, it might be better because you can modify the size of it so it's either tiny or goes the entire screen. <laughs> wow. You know, well done. Well this, done. Rem uh, this <laughs> reminds me, this is going way back, but when I was in college, I was dating a girl who had a younger sister who was a spoiled brat. Um, and uh, their father had a car collection and the spoiled brat girl had a five series BMW. Nice. And yeah, I know, right? And this was she's in high school. She had a five series BMW. Hate her and, already. Um, yeah, she. Well, she like I said, spoiled brat, uh, the baby of the family. And uh, so by the time she was coming up, the the father did quite well for himself, and she had all of all of uh, life's pleasures. So. Um, she whined and complained because the 5 Series BMW she had, it was right a around the time when they started having the extra brake light in the back and the rear window, mm -hmm. right? Remember that? When those yep. became a thing? Yep. And hers didn't have that. And because hers didn't have that, people could tell that it was a couple years older than <gasps> the new ones that had that. Mm. 
So oh. Daddy went out and got her one, just to, not the new car, but the light. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Had to run a wire into the uh, cigarette yeah. lighter. And... <laughs> exactly. And that's what this reminds me of. Poor little girl with her 5 Series, with the, the wrong 5 Series BMW. <laughs> oh, anyway. Nice. Uh, I got to say, as far as the notch goes, uh, the only change I had to make was I upgraded to uh, a beta version of Bartender and uh, went back to using the Bartender bar, which uh, basically instead of when you expand over it, everything shows up in the menu bar. This just drops a bar underneath with all of your stuff in it because I use a hmm. lot of menu icons uh, yeah. for quick access. But uh, so far, uh, when I'm not using the my giant Samsung curved monitor and just working off the 14, the notch... It, I, I don't even notice it. It just goes away. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, th those of us who are on are completely all in on Planet Mac are probably already conditioned to it from our iPhones. So yeah. <laughs> now I need one for my iPad. It's just getting confusing. Well, and someone pointed out too <laughs> that all of our cars have a notch now. If you look at the windshield of your car, yep, there's a notch yeah. there, right, yep. for the cameras. So it's the cameras and the the weather sensors that they have built, like yeah. rain sensors and all that. That everything that's built into right. those things now. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, yep. you know, it's a thing. Yep. Notch, notch world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good so. one. Okay. Also, Daniel wrote in, hey, yesterday my Mac notified me that an upgrade is available. Mac OS Monterey. I remembered and laughed at your show 490 and Dave's wonderful Big Sur upgrade. I'm watching the download right now and I hope it gets better than that upgrade did for him. But hey, I did just disconnect my time machine and I am not using migration assistant. Lots of love. Oh boy. Yeah, fuck you guys. Fuck you guys. <laughs> fuck both of you. Fuck both of you. Fuck you, Jason. And fuck you, Brian. Fuck you both. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. It's nice to have That's a recurring bit anytime there's an OS upgrade. Now. <laughs> yep. I was, I, you, you do not disappoint, Jason. I was wondering how quickly you were going to reflexively reach for that button and trigger that sound bite, and you did not disappoint. So Yeah, because I mean, we, we used to have, uh, every time that there was an odd or an even upgrade for uh, iOS, Brian's Bluetooth would either go off or it would come back on. That's right. That was, always, right. That was our running gag mm -hmm. for a long time. Somebody every finally time fixed that code. Yes. And then, you know, always with a Facebook update, how many of my settings are now p public that were once private? Oh, that was everyone. Never mind. Oh, well, now they're so all up. good. Now they're all meta. So, you know, yeah, well, yeah. yeah, whatever. So this uh, is, uh, yeah, it's good. I will say one of my colleagues here at the Cyberwire, his uh, Intel MacBook Pro did get bricked by Monterey. Ooh. Um, and so it was a quick trip to the Apple store to upgrade to a new M1 Mac Pro. The rest of us here on the staff are skeptical that his <laughs> it was computer an actually did get picked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but that's okay. Um, evidently, they were able to unbrick it by jumping through some hoops. And I include I included a link here to an article over at Ars Technica that's talking about the pattern of bricking and what you might be able to do to unbrick it. Let me guess, they unbricked it about 10 minutes after he uh, unwrapped it. And said, Funny oh, story. Can't, yep. can't return it now. <laughs> right. Gotta after keep it. After he'd already gotten, yeah, installed everything, <laughs> uh, engraved his name on the back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, gosh. Can't send it back now. I will also say that the latest version of Final Cut Pro, which I, at, these, at this point, use for exactly one thing, is unusable. Uh, so they've screwed the pooch when it comes to that. So there's there's my dose of negativity for the day. Join um, us, one of us. <laughs> <laughs> but here's an interesting thing I was thinking about this morning when it comes to the bricking of the laptop. Uh, and I'm not sure if this is possible, but I thought it would run it by you guys to see to get your thoughts on this. Is it possible if you're running a Mac laptop to have a second Mac laptop that is automatically mirroring your first so that should the first one go down, you could open the lid on the second one and pick up where you left off. I believe you could do that if you were using something like uh, use it in target disk mode. Yeah, that's machine. what I was wondering. Yeah, yeah. You yep. in target disk mode and use carbon copy cloner. Mm hmm. Okay, so Should Carbon Copy Cloner allows you to do a bootable backup yep. of the original. So you could have, okay, yep, that makes sense. A rather expensive was, proposition. 
Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. But I mean, I guess, you know, there are those for whom the half day at least that it takes to get a new machine, to go buy a new machine, get it up to speed, restore from, uh, you know, uh, whatever backup you have, it might be worth it to them to have a second one running there. Right. Uh, but I was just trying to ponder through, is it possible? And uh, so if our listeners know of anybody who's actually doing that or can point to a, a you know, a blog post or a case of someone testing it, I would love to see that. I'm, I'm curious if, it, if you can actually do it. And I wonder if the new M1 systems change your ability to do that or not. I know there, there have been some changes, obviously, in the file system and um, with things like, um, you know, the secure enclaves and things like that. Mm -hmm. How picky it is about what it allows you to boot from. So yeah. just curious. I think, I think the easiest way to do that would be, I mean, obviously it's easier if you have identical hardware. So, you know, mm -hmm. buy two. Um, yep. the, I use Carbon Copy Cloner every day. It, it just actually runs every hour. So mm -hmm. all of my production files get just uploaded to a NAS. And so it's yep. an easy restore for all the production files. And like I said, that air is always on hot standby. Because So that way I don't need to actually clone the whole OS. It's just, you know, once every few days go in and make sure all the apps are up to date and all the settings are up to date. Because one of the other things that is that um, I think would give you a big gotcha is when you're doing um, software license subscriptions, like uh, my plugins for Logic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Those things are keyed to the machine. They're like, you know, like actually keyed to the actual machine ID. So you'll probably so, still have to do some, yeah. Um, I had know, to do right. that. Unhook when, it yeah. from this one, connect it to this one, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I had to do that when I got rid of my 16 inch. I had to like, you know, unauthorize all the plugins, reauthorize them on the new machine. Kind of a pain in the ass. Took, a, But it only took about an hour to do that. Yeah. So, um, because it, I mean, all of the plugins and everything moved over. So it was literally just a, have one machine open, unauthorized, reauthorize. And some of the stuff I'd already just forgotten and deleted. So I had to just go to support and say, can you just deauthorize everything? And they're like, sure. Boom. Press a button. Done. Mm -hmm. So there's never yeah. going to, I don't think there's ever going to be, since everything is subscription based now, there's ever going to be a just like, you know, okay, this one's dead. Turn this one on and go. Unless you buy enough licenses and get everything licensed up on that machine. Right. Yeah. And, and for some things like, you know, if you're if, because so much stuff is in the cloud already, if you're using Gmail, if you're using, you know, any of the cloud based uh, services that will that's just automatic. That's just going to work for you. So you don't have mm -hmm. to worry about that. But, yeah, as you say, the, the Pro Tools uh, types of things, those are and by Pro Tools, I mean professional tools, not the product Pro Tools. Um, that's different. Mm -hmm. Yep. But it's, you know, it's, it, you definitely have a lot less downtime than the old days. Like, I don't yeah. worry about, I don't worry about my hard drives dying anymore. So if this 14 just dies, I can pick up where I left off in like an hour. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Which is, nothing is, nothing is locked onto that drive inside that, uh, that box anymore. Yeah, no. And anything critical, just like client files and things like that, client audio, it's all backed up to the NAS and double backed up uh, overnight to Google Drive. So there's a there's always a cloud version at the end of the day for everything that I've done. In right. time machine running all day long too, you know. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Mine is similar. I've have um, I have time machine alternating between a local um, uh, SSD drive, external SSD, and then a NAS. Uh, so it just ping pongs between those two. And then also a daily, um, you know, offsite cloud backup as well. So. Yeah, yeah. It would be, um, it would be cool if they just had like a time machine configuration that you could set to have a drive in, you know, target disk mode. That it would, it knew that it wasn't just a standard time machine backup, but just a machine sync. But like I said, I guess you could just do that with Carbon Copy Cloner. Yeah, for sure. But I got to yeah. say, it did take about eight hours to restore my time machine backup from my 16 inch MacBook to my 14 inch. So I just hmm. let it go overnight. But when I woke up in the morning, boom, it was booted up and ready to go. Hmm. Okay. Ooh. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The migration is much, much easier. Now I don't like the migration assistant stuff. I, that thing never, ever, ever works, but uh, restoring from a time machine backup seems to be pretty bulletproof nowadays. Yeah. That's what I did when I went to the M1 uh, Mac mini from the 27 inch iMac. And, uh, it was pretty flawless. I didn't take that long. I want to say it took probably about two hours, but I probably mm. have a lot less stuff than you. <laughs> yeah. I was going from a terabyte and a half 
but it was also yeah. Yeah, my, my, my terabyte and a half of data for my machine, but also it was coming from a spinny drive. My time machine backup ah, is okay. actually on a spinny platter, old school Got thing. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was on an SSD, so a little speedier. Yep. All Neat. righty. All right. Well, we got a little Star Wars news. Have you mm-hmm. guys uh, seen the Book of Boba Fett trailer? I did. I have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What'd you think? I like Who's it. first? <laughs> <laughs> um, I liked it too. It's more of the same, but the same is good. Um, I, I guess my only complaint was would be I would love to have had just a completely different look and feel from the Mandalorian for a second show, while this is very much, I mean, you know, it could be the Mandalorian, but that's okay because the Mandalorian's great. So let's yeah. see another another one of these guys wandering around the universe and, you know, shooting things up and going on quests. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah. I, I, yeah I, I'm really happy with the Mando universe. And so more stories in that universe are fine. I think most Star Wars fans have great affection for Boba Fett. And so mm-hmm. to finally see him doing some stuff other than being mysterious. Uh, <laughs> oh, and be, I, it's going to be we, fun. We had best find out how he got out of the Sarlacc in, in this show. That is all I'm saying. Yeah, I think they're going to yeah. tease that until the, se- <laughs> yeah. like the series finale. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think, I think he, I think probably what's going to happen is is he's going to allude to it a lot. Yeah, yeah. a lot. It'll be like the inside slowly, joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like slowly put little pieces together. You know, he'll run into somebody from his past and they'll say, "What happened to your hair?" I'll say, "Long story, <laughs> so I like it." You know, something like that. Yeah. Um, or but. it could be one of those things where he just makes up it, it, like outrageous stories every time, tells somebody a different story every time, so you never know which one's real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I will definitely be tuning in. I'm looking forward to it and uh, happy to have. I, 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 I guess it's fair to say that is my favorite new Star Wars stuff right now is this the stuff in the Mandalorian universe. I think that's where they're really killing it. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I do have uh, a cybersecurity story for us this week. Uh, This came out today. Um, Some researchers at University of Cambridge uh, released some a study on something they're calling um, Trojan Source. Trojan Man. (laughs) Everybody remembers. I've linked. uh, (laughs) I've linked to a blog post by a gent named Adam Caudill who is a security engineer, and um, he works at 1Password. And he's sort of broken down. He's read the research, so we don't have to. Um, and basically what's happening here, this, is, this research points out that there is a vulnerability that basically threatens the security of all code. <laughs> That's yeah, right. This is, a, this is a kind of a scary one. <laughs> yeah, all code. All code. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> yeah. This is and the matrix. That's not an exaggeration. Mm-hmm. It pretty much I mean, I don't know, it might not affect basic, but <laughs> but other than that, uh any modern language seems to be on the list. PHP um, wasn't on the list, I noticed. Yeah, I did see oh, that too. I noticed that. So uh for once WordPress is okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Uh, so at least so, we all don't have to go back to Perl. <laughs> So the, what the main issue here is that uh, all of these languages use Unicode, which is the standard for text encoding. Um, but Unicode allows both left to right and right to left languages. Mm-hmm. So think about English versus Hebrew, right? Um, and what that allows people to do is encode thing, write code that when read left to right looks like one thing, but when decoded right to left does another thing. So when you're in the midst of your code review, you're looking through someone's code, something may look benign, but it's actually able to do something else because someone cleverly cleverly made it function uh, a different way when compiled in the opposite direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. It, it, just looking at his before and after, I was like, "Oh, that's evil." It took evil. me. It took me like two minutes. I was like, "What? Uh, oh, there it is." Yeah, it's it's like mm-hmm. a really fucked up version of highlights. Like, yep. what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> yeah. So, and it, it, as they say, it affects pretty much everything. Um, I, I'd say it seems to be theoretical at this point. There, there are no cases known of it being out there 
in the wild, but really what it comes down to is who do you trust? Especially, you know, all major software packages use open source code or, you know, code that comes from other sources than in-house. And so how do you do code review uh, <laughs> when it keep this sort of thing in mind? And uh, it's, I think it's really interesting. I'm curious what you guys think. Uh, it's well, fascinating. I think it's yeah. I think it's good that they're going after the code review tools like in GitHub and some of the larger players that are that host these open source libraries, because, yeah, trying to fix all of the, you know, the actual nuts and bolts of the compilers and pre-compilers and all that stuff. Good luck. Seriously, just good luck on that. <laughs> what I particularly loved about this is, as I read the whole article, is the inherent nihilism of anybody that works in security. Um, so yes. there's this one, <laughs> there's this one paragraph. So we need to update these tools and compilers, and we're good, right? No, and probably not by a long shot. It's put. It's been pointed out that this isn't new. It's been reported at least as early as 2017, and no serious action was taken. And again in 2018 and again in 2019, and again in 2020. <laughs> this issue will still exist in a decade. I wouldn't be surprised if it still exists in two decades. <laughs> I love it. Yep. This is fine. This is fine. It's fine. Yeah. We're fine. How are you? What, uh, great. Yeah. What I also, I also my like computer at the, in the end. trash. <laughs> <laughs> I also like, and unlike Halloween candy, third-party code actually has a history of bad actors inserting dangerous objects. <laughs> nice. Yeah, because we do vet uh, Halloween candy a lot more than we actually do open source code for the most part. It's like, does it work? Okay, mm -hmm. slap it in. Somebody would have had to found something by now, right? Mm -hmm. No, not always. Yeah. Not yeah. always. So it's hard to say if this is going to be something. You know, as Brian pointed out, this this isn't a new discovery. Uh, really, this is the, the folks at, at University of Cambridge sort of putting it all together in one big research paper that lays it all out. Mm -hmm. But what often happens is when these research papers come out, well, the bad guys read them too, and they exactly. say, oh, <laughs> clever. Yeah. And they Thanks, add guys. it to their toolbox. <laughs> right, exactly. So... I don't know. We'll see if it's a thing, but you know what? In my read around the web right now, and the security folks, they're the folks who are reading it are kind of reacting the same way both of you guys did, which is, oh, huh, <laughs> it's interesting, clever, but also this could be a big deal. So we'll see. Yeah. Please hold on to the bar. Well, hey, we actually got some security, and that's a first for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, every now and then, you know, we got to justify the name of the segment, right? Yeah. <laughs> nah, it's our show. Screw them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. All right, guys. Well, that's what I've got this week. I uh, will see you guys next time. All right. See you later. Bye. Closing shout out. Over at Patreon, we've got no new subscribers, sadly. And uh, thanks to people who have upped their pledges. We appreciate you very much. We do. Over at PayPal, we've got Charlie, Richard, Michael, Matt, Nicola, Simon, Doug, Judge, Jonathan, Shaleen, Matthew, Melissa, Nikolai, and Lene, who said, I just sent you $20 on PayPal for Jason's great tip on canceling the New York Times cooking and getting an offer for all access for $1 a week with them. I figured you deserve some of my savings. Love your podcast, although I always laugh that you are grumpy old geeks. You are babies compared to me. I rate as a true grumpy old geek. Heck, I bet you can't tell me anything about the DOS 360 on a mainframe. Actually, I kind of remember that. Yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe. maybe. My, my, I read my mom's manuals. Yes. So there you go. <laughs> so thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. Over at Stripe, we got Adam D, Ann Q, Gadiel V, Mario P, John L, and Matthew S. Thank you all so much. Much appreciated. And uh, I yep. guess that's it. You got any shout outs? Because I don't. I do. Okay. I got one little shout out. It's just me. If you if you want to check out my new newsletter, The Pivoteer, just go to uh, pivoteer.substack.com. Sign up. I got a new one coming out. I was going to have a new one yesterday, but these asshole contractors screwed up my day. So next one drops on Thursday, and we're going to be going to two a week. We're going to have a mini pivot Monday, and then the big one comes on Thursday. So it's free. Just go sign up if you want to learn how some to pivot some things are, here and there. Are we referring to ourselves as the royal we now? Yes, we are. Okay. I am I am we. Just check. we is me. <laughs> Cuckoo kachoo. Until next time, I'm Brian Schulmeister. And I'm Jason DeFilippo. Thanks for listening to Grumpy Old Geeks. If you enjoyed the show, visit GOG.show slash donate to help us keep the lights on and we'll love you forever. You can also help us out by sharing the show with your friends and enemies. It's easy and absolutely free. 
Show notes for this episode are at GOG.show slash 529. From there, you can find links to everything we talked about in this episode, as well as links to our swag and Discord channel if you want to buy some stuff or chat with us and other show fans. You can also head over to GOG.show slash contact and send us your feedback or questions that we can read on the air. And if you're so inclined, please head over to GOG.show slash review and toss us a snarky review and preferably five stars. Stay notchy.